Welcome back, viewers. Today, we're going to take a closer look at a brand new leading edge foundry. Um, and usually when we think of leading edge foundry, we probably think of maybe the top two players, TSMC and Samsung. Maybe some people might include Intel in that in that list. Um, but it does seem like there might be a new space coming into this, uh, a new player entering this market. And I do have Billy here joining me, who's going to explain to us a little bit more of what's happening. Good afternoon, Billy. How's it going? Good afternoon, Jose. Going well. So, so Billy, this one's pretty interesting. I mean, I think the foundry market is, uh, we hear this is a space that's very hard to get into, right? This is a space that one of its mo is just the expensiveness of of entering, right? The, 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 the amount of money you have to pay to just kind of get in this space. Uh, so it's pretty interesting to see not only a new player in this space, but a new player in the leading edge. Um, and... They, they are expecting to kind of get some some nice chips. I'm seeing here two nanometer mass productions by 2027. Uh, I know you're going to take the lead here, Billy, so I just send it your way so you can explain to us what's happening. Sure. Uh, and this might have been a bit of news that went under people's radar. Um, so we all, know that, that we all know that there's big competition uh, for leading edge supremacy on the part of uh, the big three foundries right now, which is Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, uh, which is trying to catch up uh, by 2024, 2025, and then Intel, which is trying to catch up uh, by that time as well. And they're all investing pretty heavily and it's pretty competitive. Um, however, so for leading edge chips, it's also a national security concern as these chips uh, especially lead directly to artificial intelligence capability and supercomputing. So you have um, Intel and TSMC are now building leading edge in the U.S. Right now, all the leading edge chips are made in Taiwan with TSMC because they have the lead. But you're seeing U.S. subsidized leading edge production uh, in the U.S., you have Korea, uh, Samsung is investing heavily to get leading edge chips in Korea. Uh, it appears Japan wants some of the most leading edge chips for itself on its own shores as well. And it's, you know, they do have TSMC building fabs there, but it's not for the leading edge. That's for uh, trailing edge stuff, uh, I think between 14 and 40 nanometers. So how is Japan going to solve this problem? They're basically trying to build a fab from the ground up, a leading edge fab from the ground up. Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick 5-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join the private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. With um, the government funding a lot of this, as well as a consortium of Japan's I think they're eight largest tech and financial companies. Uh, so Denso, Kyoxia, uh, Kyoxia, as you know, makes NAND flash, uh, MUFG Bank, NEC, NTT, SoftBank, Sony, and Toyota all contributed some money uh, to get this project off the ground. And then, but most of the money is going to come from taxpayer dollars in Japan from the government. Uh, the new foundry is called Rapidus. And it was initially established in August of 2022. And its goal is to achieve two nanometer mass production by 2027. I believe that's just after TSMC plans to have its own two nanometer chips. I think that's in the 2025 timeframe. Um, the new venture will be led by Tetsuro Higashi, who formerly led uh, Tokyo Electron. 
which is good. Tokyo Electron, a competitor to Applied Materials and LAM Research in Etch and Deposition, uh, way for front-end equipment, so that's appropriate. And then another executive, Atsuyoshi Koike, Koike? I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, who formerly led Western Digital's Japanese subsidiary. Um, interestingly, this venture is licensing two nanometer gate all around technology from IBM, which um, produced a prototype two nanometer chip in 2021. Now, IBM's not a foundry uh, that can mass produce, which is much harder. However, they did, IBM does invest in sort of the, you know, real leading edge technologies like. Um, not only these two nanometer chips before anybody else did a couple of years ago, they're also investing in quantum computing and things like that. I think with the goal of licensing the technology in the future. Uh, so I thought that's in interesting um, for all you IBM shareholders out there. Um, so this was established in August, uh, licensed the IBM technology in December uh, in February, they picked a site, uh, Shitosi, near Sapporo, Hokkaido. That's the northern island of Japan. So interesting that they chose the north. That's as far away from China as possible. Uh, in April, they secured another $2.3 billion in funding from the government for uh, the initial phase of construction. They plan to have a prototype uh, scheduled in 2025 and then mass production in 2027. The current chair of Rapidus estimates it will take 7 trillion yen in total funding. So that's like $50 billion um, now through 2027 to get this to mass production. So this is a huge venture that uh, Japan is going for. Uh, now, why are they doing this if TSMC and Samsung have these capabilities? Well. The executives say that they're going to focus on cu helping customers with two nanometer designs and have a very fast time to production. They're not going to have the volume capabilities that Samsung and TSMC and Intel will probably have. So they're going to solely focus on AI and supercomputing. So only those applications, and they're going to focus on speed and getting the designs out rapidly. So that's how they hope to differentiate and I assume, um, you know, a lot of Japanese companies will probably be heavily encouraged to buy their leading edge chips from uh, Rapidus as well. Um, just this week, there was another announcement. They completed the prep work for their first EUV machine. I'm not exactly sure what the prep work entails. Um, also, they on another on on the AI tip. Initially, they this is a report from Digitimes. Um, Initially, they thought they were going to have to hire uh, 1,000 engineers to get to mass production in 2027. However, they Rapidus said that through the use of AI, they think they can cut that number in half to just 500 engineers um, to get this up and running to where they want it to be. So I thought that was very interesting, too. Um, you know, AI helping to get an AI chip plant off the ground, uh, also limiting the number of engineers that you need. Uh, it's just, so this is very interesting. So especially if you're a TSMC or Intel shareholder or a Samsung shareholder, even though it's difficult to buy Samsung shares outside of Korea, uh, this is something to have in the back of your mind, potential competitive threat around the edges, I would think, but not for about five years. So just something to keep in mind, obviously TSMC and Intel both traded pretty low valuations today. So I don't think it's a huge concern for at the current values, but um, I would uh, try to monitor this venture and see, uh, and just have it in the back of your mind that it's going to be somewhat of a competitor in the latter part of this decade. 
And for those who don't know, Japan used to be a huge player in semiconductor manufacturing and memory manufacturing. And now they have only like 10% of semiconductor production on the island. It used to be over 50% in the 1980s uh, before it really fell off with... Same thing happened in the U.S. really with the rise of TSMC and the outsourced foundry model. Um, and it looks like Japan, like the U.S., is really trying to get that back. And they're spending a heck of a lot of money to do it. So... Um, potentially competitive threat for the foundry companies. Again, it's another plus for my favorite part of the semiconductor industry, the semiconductor equipment companies. It's more mm -hmm. UV yep. machines, more etching deposition, <laughs> more packaging, more uh, metrology. Uh, it's just another competitive player and they're going to be buying more machines. So I continue to like those companies for the long term. And I'll uh, turn it back over to you on that note, Jose. Yeah. Thanks, Billy. A, a few things I, I kind of thought about when, when, when listening to, to this presentation. First, um, pretty interesting. Maybe you might have the answer, Billy. Um, it, it seems like a lot of players in the foundry space, like Intel, like um, Samsung, are saying that, hey, this 2 nanometer and below node... Um, is when we can really take the opportunity to outshine for, from the leader of TSMC. Um, is, is there something special there, Billy? That's driving that. That wh why why can't they do it in the five? Why aren't they talking about it in the five nanometer and the four nanometer? Why is it the two nanometer? It seems to be such an inflection point uh, for for the foundry market. That's a great question, and there is a very specific answer to that. And that's because the transistor structure is actually changing when you get to two nanometer from the FinFET transistor structure to nano sheet or gate all around uh, transistor structure. So today's uh, transistor structure, so you think of, you have like transistor here, and then you have, today you have a gate on three sides and then it attaches to the die. So you have like a little house for the transistor. But for two nanometer, what they're doing now is that they're putting their, the transistor is going to be surrounded on all sides by the gate on four sides. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be able to stack the transistors on top of each other um, with the gate on all four sides. So that um, the reason Samsung thinks it can catch up to TSMC is that Samsung is doing gate all around work now um, on its three nanometer or four nanometer chips. Um, TSMC is still on FinFETs at three nanometer and is only going to mm -hmm. switch to gate all around at two nanometer. Now, Samsung is basically saying, since we're starting earlier with gate all around, we're going to be leading and gate all around by the time TSMC gets to two nanometer. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. I can assure you that TSMC knows what it's doing and is probably very well prepared and has been researching gate all around uh, nano sheet technology as well. And I'm sure that it will have a compelling product just based on TSMC's excellent track record. However, Samsung is getting an earlier start on working with this type of transistors. So maybe there's something there. Maybe it's just sort of PR um, mm -hmm. on Samsung's part. But it will be interesting to see how that unfolds once we get to two nanometer. Uh, yeah. If Samsung is able, if Samsung in, and Intel are able to take share. Um, with the new transistors. It'll also be interesting to see if there's production problems with nano sheet manufacturing, because it is going to be more complex. Um, it's going to be more intensive for etch and deposition. Um, and it's obviously going to be more complicated to produce. So there's a potential in that transition for lagging players to catch up. 
just as Intel lost, you know, Intel was in the lead. And then when we got to nodes that required EUV, like 10 nanometer and seven nanometer, TSMC was able to surpass Intel because Intel screwed mm -hmm. up uh, the EUV transition. So will gate all around present that kind of opportunity for someone lagging to catch up? I'm not totally sure of that because yeah. um, TSMC appears to have a lot of momentum behind it, but it'll be interesting to watch. Definitely. Thank you for that, Billy. And, uh, and I think that was a great way. It's just a nice reset happening here in this space um, where it's allowing the opportunity for the other players to have maybe a more to somewhat leveling field. And like you mentioned, right, Billy, TSMC, while they might not be mass producing it on their four nanometers or three, they're not thinking of using it on their three nanometers like uh, or, or four nanometers like Samsung is. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that they have probably a strong engineering team working on the back end for this uh, for for this kind of um, concept of gate all around. Um, the other thing I, I thought was pretty interesting here, Billy, was how this uh, Japan Rapidus is really focusing on just this AI and supercomputing and not high volume. And it, it, in my mind, I, I I wonder how that's going to work, right? Because um, I, I feel like at the end of the day, manufacturing company really depends on some form of volume, um, especially especially because you're spending so much money on these equipments needed to to manufacture this uh, to manufacture these these things. Uh, so it, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. At first, when when I kind of heard about it, I'm like, okay, maybe this might be like a Ford or Ferrari type story where um, TSMC can be a Ford where they have cars that go for your trailing edge or your kind of more econ economy car, but maybe they might have like the Shelby for a more advanced player, right? Um, and then I was thinking maybe Rapidus would be just a pure Ferrari where they're only hitting the, the main expensive market. Uh, but then I started thinking, I'm like, at the end of the day, it, what's really going to be dependent is how much money they're spending on that manufacturing equipment stuff to to determine. Uh, and I, that I, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty expensive. But um, it is. So yeah, that was my other thought there. Yeah. Um, I, Go ahead, Billy. I read in one of the articles on Rapidus that they're going they're aiming to be a premium high margin uh, foundry that. And I think they're really trying to have a fast time to production, quick turnaround. So I think they're betting that they will get uh, premiums paid on mm -hmm. the chips that they do produce uh, for these applications. Now, we'll see. You need buyers that are willing to pay a premium um, as opposed to getting leading edge chips from the other foundries. So it remains to be, you know, it, it's... It's a high risk bet. It's a lot of money that Japan's paying to do this. So um, I imagine that there are some national security concerns uh, that are playing a part of it. And um, we will have to see what happens in 2027 if anyone buys these chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we're still doing some some videos by then on episode 3958 we might be talking about rapid is becoming the the leader in in, in this play in this foundry business yeah. um so so billy this was actually one of my favorite topics in, in a while i really enjoyed this one um and sad to close it out but any any final thoughts you 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 have about this before closing uh closing this topic uh not particularly again it's mm -hmm. um Geopolitical risk, there's risk for the foundries, but I guess, again, I think it's good for the equipment companies. So I, I mm -hmm. it's just more of the same. <laughs> Co global competition yeah. is good for the equipment companies and uh, potentially Definitely. a threat to everyone else. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate it so much for you joining, joining me. Um, I, I'll see you in a few days as we're going to do another episode soon. Um, I know one of the topics we're going to cover for now is going to be NVIDIA earnings. So listeners, if you want to uh, hear about NVIDIA Deep Dive and some other great topics like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to find Billy. I posted a link on the comments so you can find more information about Billy. Uh, Billy, thanks again and take care.
Thank you, Jose.